creating for my teammates. Like, everybody know I can score, but I feel like I don't get enough credit for the fact that I like, Everything be going with the uh the COVID nineteen and everything. Boy, I'm, I ain't gonna cap. I'm like, I'm kind of ready to go back to school. For real, bro. It'd be, I'm so bored. There's nothing to do yeah. but but homework. Yeah. So how y'all? I mean, like, how your homework schedule like and stuff going? Like, they sending y'all a bunch of work or what is it? Like, is it normal? They've been uh, sending us like um like packets for like a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, man. Got turned in at the end of the, the whatever date they put on there. So how is, is it like affecting your workout routine or like what like what is that like? Uh, Cause uh, not really. Cause um, I still got the whole day. I got a whole twenty four hours to myself now. Right, right, right. So you get to work out as much as you want, pretty much, huh? Yeah. Well, from Kilgore, Kilgore, Texas, small little town in the east. Um. Uh, really, uh, I mean, my mom, she put me in basketball, but I really kind of fell in love with it myself. Like, I didn't have to get forced into it or anything like that. Yeah. And so, I was just started from, like, I don't even know, like, second grade till now. Right. But I ain't start, I ain't really, I ain't really peak and, like, think I think I could get good or do something with it till like, eighth grade. Yeah. Did you, so you, you originally, I remember like you talked to me before and you was like, you from originally from Chicago. So is there like a difference between like hooping in Chicago? So did you actually get to play in Chicago? Yeah, I played, I played, um, no, I never got to play before I came, but during like summers, um, sometimes, some summers I go up there with my sister and, um, I got an uncle up there. He like big basketball head and like everybody around there. Everybody know him and stuff. He got like a lot of different connects. So like he be having hoop sessions. And he run like his own little camp called uh, Camp Mind Over Matter. Right. Out there. And um, yeah. And the, the way they play up there and the way they play and the way, the way we play down here is two totally different things. Boys like what's there. what's different about it? Like is it more like aggressive or is it like boys up there tough man? <laughs> they yeah. aggressive, tough. Dogs, man. Some people around here kind of you know soft, so you can't. You ain't gonna get no good hoop session around here. You gotta know the right people up there. Whoever pull right. up, gonna be nice with it. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the whole thing that I kind of like wanted to bring to East Texas because like I love basketball. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of ran into you. You know what I'm saying? By my cousin or whatever. So it's kind of like I seen you had like some of that in you. And I was like, oh, so now he can play. You know what I'm saying? Because when you first look at you, you like. People, you know what I'm saying, think you can't play or whatever because you kinda you kinda heavy, so it's like but then like you start handling the ball and, and shooting and dribbling, so it's like, okay, he can play. Then you had that bite to you. So that's why I was like, all right, I can pull with him. And then uh so that's really why I was like, I kinda I rock with you. So you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. uh so like what like what kept you going like in basketball and he said because you said like the atmosphere is like way different so it's easy to stay in love with it probably in chicago more than it is in east texas because that yeah. the, um, the exposure part of it and the you know what I'm saying like football is you know what I'm saying it's diluted it's diluted basketball in east texas so like what yeah. made you like stay connected with basketball throughout the years and not not even play football you know what i'm saying like not get peer pressure to play football um yeah, I don't, I don't really know. It just, just, just kind of sparked me, and then one day I was just like, "Dang, like I really want to be good." So yeah, I just had that that hunger and that drive. So since so like eighth grade, and then ever since then I've just been working, working, working. Right. Like, what do you think is your most underrated skill that people overlook? Um, creating for my teammates. Like everybody know I can score, but. I feel like I don't get enough credit for the fact that I, I get my teammates involved, or at least I try to get them involved, and I don't just try to like steal the show. Right. 
So like, and that's what I, that's what I, when I talk to a lot of coaches or whatever about you, I, um, that's what I tell them. Like that, I think that's his best attribute that gets underlooked, like the ability to create for other people. And I seen that last summer when you was playing for your uh, AAU team, uh, DJ H5. Um, and I think that was like your best attribute, being able to, like every time the ball touched your hand, something always good happened. So that's something that I always liked about your game. So tell me like, how it was like playing in Kilgore, like through your high school career, like tell me like that, uh, that whole glimpse, the story. Playing at Kilgore was, I mean, we, we wasn't always, we wasn't ever just trash, but it was like, it was kind of rough, you know, it was like a, like they had a good four years, like a while back. Then after that, it was just kind of like, they kind of fell off. Like they had pieces, they just couldn't put them together. So, right. And then my freshman year, I ended up, um, the coach that we had at the time, he liked, he really liked me. And, um, he, um, he let me play with them during the, um, like the fall league that they had. Mm -hmm. Right. So I played in the fall league. Um, with the varsity the whole summer, but he ended up um, putting me on JV. So I started on JV my freshman year, and then so and then the rest of my three years I started on varsity. Um, okay. And I think my first year, yeah, my first year I started. We went to the playoffs. Then the second year we went. I think we went two rounds deep. Yeah, two rounds deep and we lost. Then this year we went two two rounds deep again and lost. How was that experience like being so safe in your you say your freshman year? You know, since you was on JV, so being on starting on varsity as a sophomore, like what was that trend? Like what what was from starting on varsity as a sophomore and then starting varsity on a senior? Like tell me the different experience, like you know, what I'm saying like for your role and stuff like that. Um, well. I don't think my role, my, my role really never, never really changed because I always been like, the, I always been one to like, you know, my coach expect me to go score, you know, right, um, lead the team. But I never really just became the leader of the team till like my, um, till my senior year, which was um, this year. Because last year we had the team was like straight full of seniors, and this year <clears throat> we only had like. Uh, two other seniors and then the rest sophomore freshmen. So it, I think I think starting and being one of the main players on the team as a sophomore, um, it kind of helped me be able to lead and you know have let my teammates have faith in me. You know, like that I can get the job done. That I know what I'm talking about. That I can lead them in the right way. Stuff like that. Right. So you saying so basically you just basically you just trans transition more into a leader your your last your last couple years yeah. as a, as a start. okay so like even as a sophomore they was asking you to go put the ball in the hole yeah yeah sophomore yeah. I mean my freshman year he was he was he was telling me the coach that we had at the time that you know even though I'm a freshman he's like I'm I can handle it better than anybody that they had on the team at the time but you okay. know. The team then was like only seniors and like a couple of juniors, right? Or a couple of sophomores. So, um, you know, he he really didn't he have room for um, for me. So, but so but my sophomore year, you know, I had a good JV. I had a good. Um, I played good on JV. So he already knew what to expect from me. And then he saw me play with on varsity at a varsity level during the fall league so he kind of already expected me to score and then you know during practice and stuff it just proved myself that I can be somebody to go to so he ended up trusting me I know last year you played for DJ H5 uh, so tell, talk to him prior before that like what kind of started your summer program for like basketball wise just, I don't know it just kind of just kind of happened because my like stepdad he knew somebody with uh, AAU team and he um so he just kind of asked her if I want to play. So I started, that's where I started at. But then from there, I just kind of switched around teams because all the teams that I was playing on was just playing like local team, like local tournaments, you know, they wasn't really getting out there. You know, I was trying right. to get out there, trying to get seen. And then there was another team I was playing for. I mean, they wasn't bad, you know, they was a good team, like a really good team. Top, like, right. you know, had they been on a good or the right platform. Right, you know, right. They would, you know, they would have left the mark, but the only thing with that was when I came, they had already had that team 
set with the same players for like three, four plus years already. Right. You know, um, you know, I didn't really get to I didn't really get to do what I knew I was capable of on that team because, you know, he already knew who he wanted to do what, stuff like that. He already had his stars set out. So, you know, when I went to DJ as far as he he kinda he saw me. He saw me first, you know, through Twitter and stuff. He saw my highlights and stuff. So he yeah. hit me up. So he knew that he could see, he saw that I could play. So once we came to like the first couple practices, you know, he, and then um, he saw that, he saw what I could do in person. And then he ended up telling me, you know, like, I'm, I'm gonna be the go-to guy. And then like, during tournament, like the first couple tournaments that we played, it was like a whole, you know, it was a whole new team. Nobody knew anybody. And um, so everybody was just kind of like doing their own thing. But he had, right. he kind of told everybody like I can play like he told everybody to like if to if they was to go through me like right, we, right, right. we would have a better chance to win it and stuff. So also being um, playing for that team helped me during my senior year as a leader too because right. I, I was the leader on that team also. Probably probably my sophomore year, um, first my first playoff game and I started you know even though we lost it was just you know. A lot of people don't get to experience that until their fourth year. Right, and right. A yeah. lot of them don't get to experience it until their fourth year on the bench still. So yeah. being able to experience it my my second year and starting in it was it was kind of big. Yeah, for me. you think that's kind of they kind of uplifted your career? Like, did that boost your confidence? You think? Yeah, because it helped. Like, you know, having that, having being played in that atmosphere, it you know kind of. So I like I already played in that atmosphere. So any other game that we play in is gonna be like I'm not gonna be worried about the crowd. You know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be used right. to it. So it helped me with that too, being able to be okay. calm, cool, calm, and collective before the games and stuff. So what was your what's your most embarrassing moment in playing? On on the I ain't really never had no embarrassing moment, but I mean embarrassing to me was probably um one of the we had one game this summer and um. Dude was just killing me, you know. I felt bad. I was like, damn, you're making me look trash, bro. <laughs> Yo, what? I, mean, I, I don't remember. I don't remember who it was. I just, I just, I just know dude was killing me. And I, and then it was like, um, I think I don't remember if it was with Coach JT or if it was another time or another team or something. But I just know the coach was like, hey, they're picking on you, blah blah this and that, like. I know, man. You don't have to tell me. They're picking on me. Like, <laughs> yo, that's funny. Oh, All actually, right. I remember it was one of my old AAU teams. It was in Vegas. Um, yeah, we was in Vegas and we was playing some um California team, and dude was just killing me. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. All right, so we gonna go into this phase where I call it just a quick speed round. We gonna ask like random questions, and you just gotta give your best answer to it. Sorry. All right, so. Like, What's your favorite shoe ever? Ever? Yeah, um, ever. Probably had to be Le um one of the LeBrons. I don't even remember which one it was, but I was like the whole upper base of it was like a fly knit. Um, yeah, I got that shoe my soft. I got that shoe my sophomore year, and I don't know. I just played with it for like three years straight. <laughs> But that's probably had to be my favorite shoe ever. It's just like a real good, comfortable shoe. And right, what's your favorite place to go? Place to go? You know that question. The gym. <laughs> <Ain't nowhere else. laughs> I don't go nowhere else. I be in the house all the time. So I'm either in the gym or at the house. Step Liberty Crush. Rihanna. Been crushing, Rihanna? Been crushing on Rihanna for a little long since elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> If you had to meet somebody dead or alive, who would you want to meet? Um, Derrick Rose for sure. Cause uh, Rose. yeah, as you know, when I was starting and stuff, you know, all I used to watch was Derrick Rose highlights and stuff. He really like he really what made me want to be better, you know, cause he always get he always got injured and stuff, and he but he always came back trying to play the same way. He always had that dog in him. Fruits or vegetables? Fruits, pineapples, watermelon. Yeah. Right. Chocolate milk or white milk? I don't know. See, when I was younger, I, I like white milk. But now, they, they, it, just, it just don't taste the same. It be, it be tasting yeah. like all oh, factory and stuff. <laughs> oh, probably have to be chocolate milk. All right. What's your go-to snack? Gummy bears. For Gummy sure. Gummy bears. Yeah. All right. Kyrie or Kimball Walker? Kyrie. 
Dunk a layup. Layup, I can't dunk. <laughs> <laughs> Pasta, pizza. 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 Uh, to the viewers, if you got any uh, questions for Jeremiah, please go ahead and send them in. Morgan said, well, who's your favorite cook? Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. I ain't never, bro. She, that's crazy. it's crazy. It's really crazy. How, like she really like the LeBron in the kitchen, bro. It's really crazy how good her food is. Yeah. Well, that's what's up, man. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> Firefighter. No, I'm playing. Um. Well, I mean, I hope, hopefully. I get to play professionally, you know, AME, even if I'm good to the NBA, you know, I go overseas. They still they still paying good money overseas too. Just depending on where you go, who you playing with, what league you're in. So, right. Professional basketball player, I guess, is the answer. Right, right, right. All right. It says what what what's your plans for school? Um, oh not sure yet. It's really kinda of complicated. Um Yeah. It was looking kinda of good. You know, it looked like I was gonna get like a couple offers and stuff. But, you know, all the showcases and all that got canceled. You no know, uh, all-star games and stuff. So it's really just down to what I got on the table instead of what right, I got right. coming from. So, you know what I mean? I, got, I think, I think a lot, this this kind of messed up a lot of AAU, like, offers and stuff like that. Because yeah. now a lot of coaches got to work off film rather than coming and seeing you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's I think that messed up a lot of people. Like, it's... Yeah. it's as far as that, like, it messed up the whole process. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like you could have had way more offers on the table by now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you could have went through a couple showcases or something by now. You know what I'm saying? Because so, yeah. coaches ain't really got all that time, you know what I'm saying, to look at everybody film like that. So, yeah. So, that's, I think that kind of messed everybody up and stuff like that, man. If you died today, what would you want to be known for? <laughs> um, You know, really... Really, I want to go like to league or like somewhere professionally, so that way I can come back to my community. Like I really, like Kilgore really ain't got nothing going on. I want to, you know, make some stuff go on. You know, like post like some tournaments here. You know, right. or like go back to schools and give away, or you know, go to the little schools and like read to kids. You know, it's just like the small things that you know nobody really got a chance to do because nobody really ain't did nothing from here. So right. That's really what I'm going to be known for, somebody that, you know, made a big impact in his community and stuff like that. Yeah, that's big time, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we was talking about earlier, you know what I'm saying? E6 is really ain't known for his basketball. It's known for football. Yeah. You know and what even, and even, the, even the players that go for football, you know, they ain't coming back. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't, they ain't really making an impact. They ain't, they ain't really being like uh, – I mean, they being a good role model by going and doing what they're doing. But, like, right. they ain't coming back and, you know, like helping the kids relate to them and stuff like that. Making, yeah. them, making them know they can do it too. Yeah, that's my that's yeah, that's big time, man. What advice could you give? What advice can you give to a little baller looking up to you? Um, just grind, man, you know, no matter how hard it get, no matter how tough it get, you know, you think nobody know you, you think nobody looking at you. Hey, people be watching you, you don't even know, they just waiting. They just waiting to see what you can become, but you just gotta keep working. That's, that's right. all it is to it. In this game, you just got to work, work, work till you get to where you want to be. Right. You know, you're only going to be as good as you want to be. So that's, that's a fact. That's a big fact. Yeah, you're only good as you want to be. So that, that's, that's a good that's a good quote, too. You're only good as you want to be. Like that's, that's big time. So, yeah.